water, Ooh, weird shit like their kidneys, right? <laughs> that filters the water. You have kidneys that filter your water. And then what's the other thing? You gotta have a full spectrum light, right? You gotta have a full spectrum light because it needs to mimic the sun. So we have needs just like that. Now the fish flakes are really important. That's like the food that we feed to the fish that are like your cells. That's really important. But is the water more important than the quality of the fish flakes? The quality of water may be more important Mm -hmm. I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. if the water's dirty, the fish won't thrive even with good food. If we crank the pH way up alkaline, the fish will die even if they get the best food. If we crank the pH down low acidic, and we've explored a lot today. If you were out on the walk, we talked a lot about acidity and alkalinity. If we start to crank the acidity up, or we start to crank the pH down into an acid water, <coughs> the fish can't thrive even with good food, right? If the water has too much salt in it if the water's really stagnant, if there's chemicals, there are pollutants in it, no matter how good the food is, they can't thrive. Now, we've all taken the steps to switching to really good fish flakes, right? So maybe in the beginning, our fish flakes for our body might have been like McDonald's and Twinkies and, and you know, shepherd's pie or whatever. And then we start shifting over to real good quality food. So today at lunch and at dinner, we had like the real good fish flakes. The quality of our water, however, as we kind of can see through metaphor, is actually really the key thing. Because we're really like a fish tank. We're not like an airplane, we're not like a car, we're not like a motor scooter, where um, it's just a machine that runs on a fuel. If it was, you could eat anything, right? Just put fuel in there. But we're aquatic. We're an aquatic ocean biology. So the water quality actually matters, and it matters a lot. And a lot of us are probably interested, and we probably, most of us have probably taken some measure to check in with what the water is that we're drinking. So I would imagine most people are probably gone into some kind of filtered water or some kind of bottled water. We've probably begun to explore in some way some options. So I'm just gonna bring, and I know a lot of you already know I'm really into spring water, so I'm not gonna spring the big one on you. It's not gonna be like a, you know, I, don't, I know it's not gonna be a cliffhanger to know what water I'm into. But let's explore why a little bit and let's look at through some metaphor. Who remembers the first time that they realized they had to buy bottled water and they had to pay money for it? Does anyone remember? Really? I have like a real <coughs> visceral memory of it. I was in Florida, I was 18 years old, and you know, when you're 18, I thought like I was gonna move to Florida and it was gonna be like tropical paradise and I was gonna be raw food or fruitarian guy and just live out my life in tropical paradise and got to you know Tampa and found out what it was like down there. And, <laughs> um, and that was the first time, I think up till then, I was drinking tap water. So when I arrived there, people were like, you, you know, you can't drink the water here, Daniel. And uh, I, was, I was like shocked. I was like, you, why can't you drink the water? And they were like, well, you have to buy bottled water. And I was like, I have to buy the water? Right. And for the first time feeling, whoa, I have to exchange currency for water. That felt really strange to me. So I've sat with that for years because that was one of those formative experiences that has informed me and in how I personally see the world. Today, I, you know, what I understand is that water is our freely given birthright from the earth. And it's not challenging for us to go out there and find water. However, most of us don't know how to access water sources. Similarly, we could go outside here and we can find a whole bunch of edible foods. We did that today. But probably very few of us feel equipped to go out and actually come in with enough food to feed the group, right? You might be like, wait, I remember a whole bunch of those plants. And so you'd come in and you'd have like a, a wilted green <laughs> stud. be like, well, I'm not really sure what to do with it. It's not just finding the stuff, right? It's knowing what time of year. It's knowing how to process it, how to prepare it, how to make it useful. Well, we can find water all over the place. Like today, we found that big pool of water when we went on that initial walk. But it, wasn't, it just wasn't looking like that prime drinking water. So we can find water, but what, how do we, where do we get good drinking water? Um, I, I've been exploring that for a long time. When I first realized I had to pay for water, that it wasn't gonna be freely given to me from my ecosystem, I didn't know how to find it, I was really disturbed. Later on what I found out was that, that the, the Japanese word, has anybody heard me talk about this before? You guys know Dr. Emoto? Yeah. Oh yeah. So he put out all of those, those books, uh, the messages from water. And he talks about, in his book, the Japanese word abomination. And he says that the word abomination is made of two characters. And you see this a lot in the kanji of Asia, where, the, where one word will be made of mixing two words together. And sometimes those two words won't, see, when you put them together, they mean something. When you take them apart, it's like, how could that possibly go together and mean something? When you take two cell and water, and you put it together, it means abomination. That kind of, you can kind of viscerally experience that, right? It's like, yeah, wait a second. 
Well, what happens with water when we drink it? Right? If we put water, if we drink some water right now, what's going to happen? It's going to go in the mouth. Mm -hmm. Like, let's really break it down because a lot of people have. You guys remember that game Mousetrap when you were a kid? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never worked, Mousetrap? Sometimes like, people think inside their body like that. Like, they don't really know what's in there. It's like they're not really sure what's going on in there. So let's break it down. So, water goes in, goes down the esophagus, right? Mm -hmm. Hits the stomach. Now, the stomach's not really an organ of absorption for food, it just processes things. Few things get absorbed in the stomach, like alcohol, because we talked about alcohol as a solvent, so it can absorb. Aspirin, strangely, does. But most things don't absorb in the stomach, but water can. Because we're made of water, it starts to diffuse right in the stomach. Some gets into the small intestine where it's absorbed there, some gets into the colon and it's absorbed there. But the whole gut tube absorbs water right into the bloodstream, immediately into the bloodstream. There's nowhere else that it goes. It doesn't go first to like, it doesn't go to like a tube that goes to the kidneys and you pee it out. It goes into the blood immediately. So drinking water is like pouring water into the fish tank. You're literally adding it to the rest of the water. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's your blood. So this water right here, right, this is my blood. This is going to be my blood. And there's not a lot more sacred than the blood, right? Like we see in the scriptures where it says the blood is the life. So your life is in your blood. So then it occurs to us then if, if we have to purchase our water, what we're really doing is we're purchasing our bloodstream. And that's kind of a strange concept, right? Like suddenly it's like, hey, wait, what's going on here? How do we get to this place where we have to, to buy our blood? That's really weird, right? It's really strange. And that never sat right with me. So I've been exploring other options. Now, I started out with, you know, filtering my tap water. I started out with like the Brita kind of filter. You guys all know those filters, right? Mm -hmm. What are they made of? Who knows? Charcoal. Shut it up. Charcoal, they're, yeah, they're, they're like the activated charcoal. They're carbon. Carbon has this ability to grab, grab different molecules, bind them up, lock them up, so that you know the water can come through on the other side cleaner. But how well do those work? I mean, most of us probably know they're, it's like this much of a filter, right? So the water just runs through and comes out the other side. And it does something, but it's not really gonna clean the water, right? And if we, if we read the box, it says, removes what? Anybody seen it? Sediments? Yeah, some sediments, some, some contaminants, the taste of chlorine. But it never says it removes chlorine. It just removes the taste of chlorine. Some things go through, right? Things get through there. So um, interestingly, those filters are more kind of like they make us feel good up here, but they're not really doing a whole lot. So the, uh, that sort of starts to like be less of an option when you're going, hey, you know what? I'm empowered to take control of my health. And if I said, hey, if you found out some of the foods you're eating were bad, what'd you guys do when you found out the foods you're eating were bad? You made a switch, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm gonna make a switch you've got the power to. So when I found that, I was like, well, time to make a switch. So I went on to the reverse osmosis filters. That's a more powerful filter. Now that removes a lot of stuff. That removes a lot of stuff. Starts to pull a lot of contaminants out of the water. What's the, ne what's the next big step? What's the one people do to really break their water down and clean it? What's the biggest Distillation. clean? Distillation. Hey, S Steven. Yeah. Can I grab you out here? We're going to pause for a second. Steven's just been, you know, busting out the chocolates. He's got some chocolates for us tonight that, he, that come from directly from the survival products that are out there. We've kind of scoured the globe looking for the most transformative food that we could get. And we, that deer antler and colostrum, uh, we chose those very specifically from all the foods on the planet that we wanted to represent for real specific reasons. They have the power to transform your life, literally because they contain growth factors. And Steven called me up the other day and said, hey, do you think we could put that in chocolate? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So we have that in chocolate. We're gonna have those tonight if you guys are interested. Very powerful substances, and we've actually not really had them in the chocolate before. So this is kind of the first time, which is exciting. Chocolate is a delivery vehicle for medicine, so we're gonna deliver it via chocolate. And um, if you feel like dropping a donation at all for any of that, we're gonna have that bowl out, but you don't have to. So just check in with yourself if you feel that. And if you don't, please still imbibe in them, because we want you to share in them for sure, and we want you to experience those medicines either way. So those are options for you. So thank you, uh, Stephen, for right. can, uh, If you guys are up for some chocolate, I can actually just pass around. While yeah, that'd be fun. Just keep going, that right? um, we'll, we'll start with our, our first course. Would it be the could colostrum you, chocolates? Could you describe better what we're getting? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, I will, but I'm not going to do it yet. Okay. But I will. I'm okay. just going to make it wait. All right, so, you know, distillation is another one. We hear a lot about that. A lot of the health proponents out there are talking about distillation. 
So some of you might go like, you might go like, you know what? Daniel came down here and he talked. He he had this to say about distillers, and this person had this to say about them. And why are we? Why would I have my own view on it just based on information that I have that might be different than information?